Good evening, Wake. Welcome to the December 11th St. Tammany Parish Commi uh, Planning Commission meeting. Madam Secretary, please call roll. Commissioner Casabon? Here. Commissioner Lauren? Here. Commissioner Richard? Here. Commissioner Willie? Here. Commissioner Davis? Here. Commissioner Baggard? Here. Commissioner Fitzmorse? Here. Commissioner Doherty? Here. Commissioner Drum? Here for <laughs> And Commissioner Randolph? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Thank you. Please turn off all phones and pages. If you don't like the decision of this commission, you can always appeal it. We have appeal cards up in the front. If you'd like to discuss one of the cases tonight, we also have speaker cards. Uh, if you are speaking, we'll give 10 minutes to each side and five minutes for each side for rebuttal. Mr. Randolph, will you please do the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance by C Commissioner Baggard. Please stand. in our lives we thank you for your grace and your favor all day throughout this day and throughout this at this moment in time lord we thank you we thank you for this commission we thank you for those that's in the audience and those that are not that we represent in the, as in in this entire parish bless us all and make us give us the, the wisdom to make the right decisions and all these blessings we ask in your name amen amen <clears throat> Okay, so if the commissioners have had a chance to review the no November 13th planning minutes, I'll take a motion to approve. <clears throat> Commissioner Randolph. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Drum. Second. Second by Commissioner Drum. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Staff, I see now we have listed uh, on our agenda tonight the request for postponements. That's correct. We have uh, the Preserve at Goodby Lakes, Providence Park Phase 1, and Tamanen, St. Tammany Advanced Campus. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, I'll read each one individually and we can make motions. First postponement, 2018-1053 postponement, PP, the preserve at Goodby Lakes, developer owner DR Horton Inc., Gulf Coast, engineer is quality engineering and surveying, parish council district representative, the Honorable James Thompson. Do we have someone to, to come up and ask for the postponement again? Looks like we've postponed this since about June. Good evening, Mr. Davis. Jeff Shane of the Joan Fusel Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington, and I represent the developer. You'll remember that when I appeared before you last month in old business to request that this item be placed on the agenda, uh, I forewarned that uh, the parish had an ordinance before it that would possibly amend the fill ordinance. As you may know, that ordinance discussion has been tabled by the council until their June 4, 2019 meeting, but they have, they're in the process of putting together a task force committee to study and discuss the problem. That task force will include uh, residents, citizens, constituency, if you will, the development community, engineers, etc. Uh, I do not know that this particular case will go forward until some later date. Uh, it could be that as that legislation develops, we may uh, change our project or we may stick with the project and go forward. Uh, I have spoken with Dr. Martin and others, who I don't think are here this evening, because they knew I was going to request the postponement. 
I think it would be appropriate to do, if the commission is so inclined, to just indefinitely postpone. We don't want to bother your agenda monthly nor ask others to come out. And I think it's our job collectively to watch and see where this legislation goes. Because at the end of the day, it definitely has a profound impact on the design uh, of the subdivision, uh, specifically the amount of fill that you can bring in, drainage consequences, things of that nature. And I think all of us want to have uh, a good solution, maybe the best solution, one that hopefully works for everybody. I think that's the path that the council has placed us on uh, in studying this issue. So with that having been said, I respectfully request that you indefinitely postpone preliminary subdivision review for the Preserve at Goodby Lake. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to talk against this postponement? If not, I'll bring it back to the commissioners. Commissioner Casabon. I'll make a motion to uh, postpone indefinitely. A motion to postpone indefinitely by Commissioner Casabon. Commissioner Willie. Second. A second by Commissioner Willie. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. 2018-1105 PP, Providence Parks Phase 1, Developer Owners, Providence Parks LLC, Engineer SLD Engineering and Surveying, uh, Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable James Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paul Marone on behalf of Providence Parks LLC. I echo the same comments as Mr. Shane. As you know, this project uh, has been held up for the same reasons uh, and for the same reasons that he just laid out. We would respectfully request that Providence Parks be tabled indefinitely as well. Thank you. Does anybody in the audience would like to speak for or against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Willie. Move to uh, table indefinitely. A motion by Commissioner <coughs> Willie to table indefinitely. Commissioner uh, Casabon. I'll make a second on that. With a second on that by Commissioner Casabon. Please vote. Motion carries. 2018-1316-FP, Tamarind, St. Tammany Advanced Campus, STAC, Developer Owner, St. Tammany Parish Government, Engineers, Richard C. Lambert, Consultants, LLC, Parish Council District Representative is, is Steve Stefanczyk. Anybody? Jeff? Uh, good evening. Uh, Jeff Shane, same appearance as before. Uh, I represent uh, Weyerhaeuser as it relates to this development. Uh, there were meetings uh, maybe late morning today. Um, the parish is involved in this project as the parish is actually a co-owner of some of the property. So there are some revisions that are being made to the plat, but we have every confidence that we should be ready to appear before you on the 9th. Or tenth, uh, ninth of uh, I think whatever it's your second the eighth, eighth maybe the eighth excuse me yeah the eighth of January uh, with a final plat for this phase of Taminin so uh, for those reasons we ask that you postpone but only one month until January thank you Paul thank you is there anybody in the audience would like to speak for or against this case if not I'll bring it back to the commission Commissioner Randolph. Yeah, motion to postpone until next month's meeting. Commissioner Randolph makes a motion to postpone for one month. Commissioner Darty. Second. With a second by Commissioner Darty. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. Okay. And that's all the postponements. Yes. Okay. All right, we next go into the entering Paris right away servitudes, easements, and Tammany Trace. <coughs> Entering the parish right away, C.S. Owens Road. The request is to install two covered crosswalks. The depth there is the St. Tammany Parish School Board. The general location is C.S. Owens Road, Madisonville Elementary School. Parish Council District Representative, Honorable Marty Dean. Good evening again. Uh, Jeff Shane, for the record. I have the pleasure of representing the St. Tammany Parish School Board in connection uh, with an expansion project at Madisonville Elementary School. Uh, in prior years, this commission granted authority to the school board to construct a covered walkway across C.S. Owens Road, which is a public road 
that uh, divides, if you will, uh, the campus, the North and South campus. I'm happy to report to you that the school board has plans to build a 56,000 square foot new building on the north side of campus, and that expansion includes two covered walkways across C.S. Owens Road. Uh, for those that might be wondering, uh, during the school day, that section of C.S. Owens Road is under gate uh, pursuant to approval procured from the parish, meaning that there's no uh, public use uh, of the public street. Obviously, the covered walkways that facilitate moving children, teachers, staff, et cetera, uh, from the south to north and north to south portions of the campus. Um, the uh, two covered walkways are 17 feet uh, from surface to height, which has obviously uh, been reviewed and approved uh, by your staff as it relates to being sufficient elevation for school buses and other type vehicles uh, to cross under. So we hope that once again, you will consider granting permission to the school board. We have reviewed the resolution that you've prepared with regard to the conditions to enter the public right of way. We're agreeable to all of those conditions and uh, ask that you so move. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them. Thank you. Staff, you have any comments about the resolution? Uh, no, we're, we're fine okay. with it. Anyone in the audience would like to discuss this? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Fitzmorris. I'll make a motion to approve and only say that my daughter attended there up until two years ago, so it's two years too late in my opinion, but I'll make a motion to approve. I've got a motion to approve by Commissioner Fitzmorris, Commissioner Doherty. I'll second, but I've got uh, a couple of questions, and it's just for my own information. Okay. The, you mentioned that the, the traffic uh, is gated, or the, the uh, street is gated mm -hmm. uh, during certain hours. Yes. Do you happen to know what those hours are? Yeah, roughly 8.30. 9, 9 to 4. 9 to 4. Okay. And they've been it's, gated for probably 10 to 15 years at least. What what kind of uh, speed limits on that road so that if there's some after school activities mm -hmm. and the gates are open, mm -hmm. what kind of speed limit is, is I'm is not that? certain. I want to say Okay. All right. It just, I saw that it was gated, but by the same token, I didn't know the hours. And if, sure. if there is some... Uh, One thing that um, I think that would address your question and concern is that there is a very limited use of the road outside of school use. There's really only one subdivision, um, which name escapes me at present, Stonebrook, which may have 25 homes. Plus, is that a good guess? Plus or minus. That's really, though, the only uh, development, if you will, that would have any reason to be on C.S. Owens Road. So it's not as if it's a thoroughfare, is my point. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shane. That's a second by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Lauren. Yes. As soon as I get through running there. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Uh, I'm very familiar with this school. I've done an awful lot of volunteer work over in that area, in, in the school. <clears throat> if, if you look at the handout I gave you, I do have a couple of questions, Jeff. <clears throat> Would it help me to have a handout? Well, it, I've got one. You can have one. No, no. I mean, I, it's, it's, tell me if this, I'm. This is just a glow. This is just a. What do you want to call it? Sure. It's a little bit more. If if you can see the the highway out in front of the school, that's 1077. The the one that runs diagonally from the the southeast up towards the northwest. You see the one I'm talking about? That's 1077. And you see the, the road in question is one that goes perpendicular to that, that goes back to the school. What you can't really see because of the tree line is that road goes down there and it makes a, a hook and it goes up to Galatis Road. 
okay? <clears throat> where, it, where it does that, right next to the school, you can see surrounding the school on two sides is a subdivision. <clears throat> is that visible? To, okay. Owens Road goes from Gladys Road down, and then it makes a, a turn, and it's the only road I know that goes in two different directions, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> and it's the only entrance for that subdivision. You can either go from Gladys Road into it, or you can go from 1077 into it. They're blocked off part of the day as it is right now. I just want to make sure we don't approve something that's going to create a big obstacle. These people have to have moving vans that move furniture when, when the homes sell. Is there plenty of clearance for moving, furniture moving vans? If there's 17 feet If that's addressed to me, yes, sir, we believe so, and I think staff is. That, that's the question. I, is, is 17 feet clear, plenty clear enough for that? Yes. Okay, that, that answers my question. There's, there are 28 homes back in there, and I just don't want to, if you'll also look just, just to the west of the, the area, there's, there's a good, right by the ballpark area, there's some more de undeveloped land. Mm -hmm. And eventually that, if you look at this school, the part that's mostly white topped, <clears throat> that was the way the school looked like for Madisonville Elementary School six or eight years ago. And then where the purple top is, is where they put the temporary buildings. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And then they built Lancaster Elementary School. What I'm saying is that that's a growing area. And, and all of this area around here is gonna fill in. I just don't wanna create a landlocked situation. Sure. Uh, one comment that I think would, would uh, make you feel better in that regard, probably for the last year, we've been working with Councilman Dean and the Department of Public Works in connection with the expansion of the width of C.S. Owens Road, where it connects to Galatas. That would be great. That's a, a project that's in process, but it definitely uh, something very real, meaning that there's been more than just a request been meetings on site and hope of procuring sufficient right of way to widen Galatas. That's, uh, I'm sorry, widen <laughs> C.S. Owens, that sector that would connect to Galatas. So well, that, that, in that, part, would, that in part would address some of the things that you're referring to. Well, I just, Jeff, I just <clears throat> don't want to see us with 28 homes landlocked back there. That yes, well, understand that the request before you this evening has nothing to do with the hours or days that C.S. Owens is currently, if for lack of a better word, inoperable. It only has to do with constructing two covered walks over the building. And as you said, we need to make sure it's high enough, not just for school buses, but also for the people that live in Stonebrook who might be moving or whatever. And uh, we believe that that is sufficient height and your staff has concurred as well. Well, as long as they, they're the experts, <clears throat> but the covered walkway is definitely needed. Okay. I do have one more question, Jeff, if you don't mind. Sorry. <clears throat> looking at the plat that you, you provided well, tell for you us. I need the exercise. Well, looking at the plat that you provided for us, I see the actual new gate that you're going to install before the first, the first covered walkway. That's item number 14 mm -hmm. on the new site plan. Is there another, is there another fence past the second walkway? 
Yes. Okay. That, and they're in place now. Thank you. I, I just didn't see it, but thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Fitzmorris to approve and a second by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Doherty. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, under minor subdivisions, 2018 1015 MSP, a minor subdivision of a 4.07 acre parcel into parcels A, B, C, and D. Owner is of Rosemary Gunn and Willie Gunn Rev Revocable Trust. The surveyor is Land Surveyor LLC. Parish Council District Representative is the Honorable Steve Stefanczyk. This was postponed indefinitely at the June 12th meeting and it's being placed back on our agenda tonight. Staff, comments? The reasons for the public hearing is that parcel A does not meet the minimum road frontage and parcel D does not meet the minimum lot size of one acre. The applicant is seeking three waivers in conjunction with the minor subdivision request. Parcel A has a proposed road frontage of 122 feet and therefore requires a waiver of the 150 foot requirement. Due to parcel D being a half acre, a waiver of the minimum one acre lot size is required, as is a waiver for water and sewer connection. Parcel D is bisected by Ordon Road, therefore staff has no objection to the request as it meets the underlying zoning requirements of half acre parcels. The following revisions will need to be made before the survey can be recorded. Signature line for the chairman of the planning commission will be need, will needed to be added. Yes, ma'am. Um, Michelle Panino at 77247 Panino Road in Covington. Okay. Um, we just would like to try to get this subdivided the way the surveyor um, has it drawn. Um, the half acre piece was created when the owner of the house at the end of Ordone um, created that driveway. I, I remember this case from previously, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I did take this case in August um, for the right. zoning. Okay, do I have anybody in the audience would speak against this case or for this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Casabon. I'll make a motion to approve. With the waivers? With the waivers. Motion to approve by Commissioner Casabon with the waivers. Commissioner Randolph. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Randolph. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Still under minor subdivisions, 2018-1288 MSP, a minor subdivision of 37.3 acre parcel into parcels A and parcel B. Edge Lane Folsom, owner is Delos and Young Thompson, surveyors Land Surveying LLC, Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable James Thompson. Staff? The reason for the public hearing is that parcel B does not meet the minimum road frontage. The applicant is seeking a waiver of the minimum lot frontage of 300 foot. The parish maintain road ends at the property and the applicant has no opportunity to gain additional road frontage. Staff does not have any objection to their request. Um, we are requesting if the, if, that the um, access servitude be increased to 35 foot. Um, that way if the property gets subdivided again, that you have the, the um, minimum for a parish drive, I mean for a private drive. Yes, sir, and you are? Dayless Thompson. And you uh, ag agree with the, the, the staffs about the, the servitude increase? Yes, sir. Of 35 feet? Okay. Yep. Anybody in the audience would like to speak against about this? Not I'll bring it back to Commissioner Casabon. Yes, uh, he's actually selling a portion of this to his connecting neighbor, and I'll make a motion to approve with the waiver. Motion to approve by Commissioner Casabon with the waiver. Commissioner Randolph. Second. I got a second by Commissioner Randolph. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. 2018 1295 MSP, a minor subdivision of a 13 acre parcel into parcels C1, C2, C3, Highway 41, and Howard, Howard O'Berry Road, Pearl River. Owner is Craig Singletary. Surveyor is John G. Cummings and Associates. Parish Council District Representative is the Honorable Richard Tanner. Staff? Parcel C was a part of a previously approved minor subdivision and therefore requires a public hearing. 
Um, the minor subdivision request meets all the minimum requirements of the ordinance. Staff has no objection to the request. Okay. Yes, sir. Craig Singletary, I live at 68300 Highway 41, Park Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anybody in the audience want to speak for or against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Fitzmorris. Make a motion to approve. Motion to, to approve by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Commissioner Randolph. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. 2018-1307, MSP, minor subdivision of a 3.5-acre parcel, Wiggins Road, Mandeville. Owner is Brian Babineau. Survey is R.W. Krebs. Parish Council District Representative is Riker Teledino. Staff? The parcel was a part of a previously approved minor subdivision, and therefore requires a public hearing. Uh, the minor subdivision request meets all the minimum requirements of the subdivision ordinance, and staff has no objection to the request. Yes, sir. I'm Brian Babineau. I reside at uh, 1138 Calice Olivier Road and Bridge now. Okay. Does anybody in the audience want to speak for this case or against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to Commissioner Baggert. Commissioner Baggert. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner ba Baggert. Commissioner Fitzmorris. Second. Second by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. 2018-1311-MSP-A-Minor-Subdivision-of-a-23.4-acre-track-into-track-A-and-track-B-Highway-1077-Covington-Development-Owner-is-Terry-and-Donna-Beaver-The-Survey-is-C-Mr.-Surve
Okay. So I, how, I make my motion to approve. Do you understand that? Oh, yeah, but he still needs it for the lot frontage on public road. Okay, right. so I'll make a motion to approve. Make with the waiver. waiver, yes. <laughs> with the That's waiver for, for, for yeah. no lot frontage on the road. Okay. Okay. I have a motion to approve with, uh, with the waiver for no lot frontage on the road. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Randolph. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Randolph. Any more discussion? Please vote. Mr. Baggard and Mr. Fitzmorris, would you like to vote? <laughs> Motion carries. Okay. Uh, no petitions request, revoke, uh, revoke applications, closings review, no re-subdivision review, no dormant subdivision review. Let's go to tentative subdivision review. Case 2018-1313 TP, Maison Trace, developer owner is First Horizon, engineer is T. Baker Smith, LLC, Parish Council District Representative is Riker Teledino. Staff? Uh, the two comments that we have are they need to revise the plat to show the net acreage of 9.62 acres shown on the lot breakdown sheet in the subdivision information block, and number two, revise the road names for Maison Trace based on the concerns and comments raised by 911 addressing. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you, Mr. Wow. Davis. Wow. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say is wow. They should have took those two line items and put them on the front page. That would have been the first time ever I've seen, even, especially a tentative. You just, know what? I you know, wish I'd have thought of that. That that's would have been we awesome. Have yeah, no, I'm just saying, you might as well take advantage of the situation, right? I, I'm going to only nice. respond if you have questions, but I would bring to your attention that I believe that there are eight lots that are in cul de sacs that do not have 60 foot widths. And I would appreciate consideration of a waiver, which I think requires a two-thirds vote of the commission. Each of those lots do have a significant square footage, and they meet the requirements at the building setback. But that's an issue that you see from time to time. Also, uh, for those in the audience and the general public that might be listening, uh, when this matter was zoned by the council to A4A, um, there was a commitment made that this subdivision, when brought back to you, uh, would not exceed, I think it was actually 55 lots. You'll see that it comes back to you today as 54 single family lots. Uh, the last time you saw this piece of property, we had a far different project for you to look at. But hopefully, uh, we believe this is a good project that will be compatible, hopefully, with the neighborhood and will produce some good opportunities uh, for homeowners. So, with that having been said, unless you have questions, we respectfully request uh, that you grant tentative subdivision approval for Mason Trace. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody in the audience want to speak for or against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to, to the commission. Commissioner Lauren. I make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve with the waiver? With the waiver. With the waiver. Uh, Commissioner Doherty. I'll second. I have a second by Commissioner Doherty. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Under preliminary subdivision review, 2018-1280 PP Wrigley's Estates Phase 3A, developer owner is Secession of Frederick J. Segur, engineer is GEC Inc., Parish Council District Representative is the Honorable Michelle Blanchard. This was postponed from the November 13th meeting. Staff? Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection of the site was made. <clears throat> the following comments must be addressed before a work order is issued. General comments, number one, at the time that Wrigley's Estates Phase 3 PUD was approved, the existing phases of Wrigley's Estates were a private subdivision. Therefore, staff had no objection to the cul-de-sac at the west end of Yellowfin Drive instead of a connecting road. Now that all phases of Wrigley's Estates will be in the parish maintenance system, the Department of Development Engineering recommends that the cul-de-sac be eliminated and have phase 3A1 tie into the existing phase of Wrigley's Estates. This will improve traffic flow and provide an additional outlet for phase 3A1 while also eliminating a dead-end situation in the existing phase. Number two, a complete traffic study for the entirety of Wrigley's Estates, phase 3 PUD, 
must be submitted for review and approval in accordance with Chapter 125, Subdivision Regulations, Article 6, Traffic Impact Analysis. Number three, DOTD approval of the TIA and DOTD driveway permit for all of Highway 433 connections associated with the PUD as required. Number four, utility company approval of the water distribution lines and sewer collection lines as required. Number five, provide the geotechnical report including the roadway design and pavement sections that will be used. Six, LDH approval of the water distribution lines and sewer collection lines as required. Informational items, since this project is within tidal range, no detention is required. The fee in lieu of detention has been calculated in the amount of 16.887 acres at $1,500 per acre for $53,330.50. However, the developer is requesting a waiver of this requirement. See attached request dated November 26, 2018. Staff has no objection to this request. No funded maintenance obligation is required since the subdivision is um, fronts on a state highway. No mandatory developmental fee is required since final subdivision um, Submittal in accordance with St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinances, Part 2, Land Development Code, Chapter 125, Subdivision Regulations, since a public hearing was held prior to January 1, 2005. The developers hereby advise that upon application for final subdivision approval, the engineer of record for the development shall certify in writing that all aspects of construction have been completed in accordance with the approved plans and parish ordinances. If any construction activity is is proposed that's not in substantial compliance with the approved plans and parish ordinances, the engineer of record for the development shall notify in writing the Department of Development prior to beginning said construction activity. The developer engineer of record shall obtain written approval from the Department of Development prior to beginning any proposed construction activity that's not in substantial compliance with the approved plans and parish ordinances. Revised drawings will not be accepted prior to the December 11, 2018 Planning Commission to ensure that any additional comments at the meeting can be incorporated into the revised plans. Mr. Morone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paul Morone on behalf of Mr. Seeger, the executive, the succession of Mr. Frederick Segura. Um, with regards to the staff comments, I'd like to walk through each of them and uh, provide uh, an update on some, a status on others, and give our response uh, to each. Uh, with regards to item one and the connection of the roadway in lieu of the exis existing cul-de-sac, uh, the new phases or the additional phases of Wrigley's Estates will be separate, if you will, from the existing phase of Wrigley's Estates. There will be separate restrictions, uh, separate homeowners association, and for all practical purposes, they will be two different developments. This phase uh, or, or this section of Wrigley's, not this particular phase, but the remaining develop, uh, developable property has additional uses that you don't see in phase one. For example, there is a large commercial sector. There is a uh, large marina area that is part of this portion of the PUD. Uh, because of that, the residents in phase one have asked for some separation between the two. And it is for that reason to honor their request uh, that we have shown the cul-de-sac. We've talked about this with, uh, with Mr. Watson uh, and with the staff. Uh, so we would respectfully request that we be able to uh, keep the cul-de-sac there and that we not have vehicular connection between the existing phase of Wrigley's and this phase. With that being said, we certainly will honor whatever uh, this commission decides. Uh, but we would ask for your consideration uh, in keeping the cul-de-sac as shown. With regards to item number two, in uh, the TIA, in 2013, a traffic impact analysis for this project was performed. Uh, and at that time, it was performed in conjunction with some changes to the plan that did not take place. But at that time, there was a proposal for about 640 units. That is far in excess of the number of units that we have in the plan now. At that time, that traffic study indicated that there were no level of service problems whatsoever uh, in the study area. In fact, all of the, uh, the, uh, the intersections were at level of service A, with the exception of one, which was at a level of service B. However, uh, since that study uh, was done about five years ago, the staff has asked us to, uh, to revise the study, and we are in the process of doing that. Uh, Mr. J.B. Burke's office is working on that study. We expect to have it shortly. 
because there have not been significant changes in that area with regards to the traffic, we do not anticipate any problems whatsoever based on the prior findings in 2013. So we would ask for your approval this evening subject to that uh, TIA being submitted, reviewed, and approved by your staff. We understand the DOTD will need to approve the TIA. We'll submit it upon completion. We have already submitted uh, the entire PUD plan to DOTD with regards to the driveways, and we are waiting on their response uh, to that submittal. With regards to item four, the utility company approval of the water distribution and sewer collection lines, we have submitted our plans to TESI, who is the provider in that area, and we are waiting for their response. In regards to uh, sewer and water, uh, our engineers have determined that there is existing capacity for sewer uh, in, the, uh, in, in the sewer treatment plant uh, that is currently servicing uh, phase one. Uh, and we have uh, sent that information on to TESI and are waiting for their confirmation about the existing capacity that is, uh, that is there. With regards to item five, the geotech report is in process. All field work is complete. We should have the report within the next several days and be in a position to submit that uh, to your staff. Uh, we understand that uh, the water distribution lines and sewer collection lines need to be submitted to Louisiana Department of Health for their approval, and we will comply with that request. Uh, finally, uh, with regards to uh, the waiver on the fee in lieu of detention, uh, we are in a unique location uh, in the Wrigley's. We are at the end of the line, if you will. Uh, and so it's clear that detention would not make sense. As you, as you well know, if you're in the bottom two-thirds, but certainly in the bottom third of a basin, then detention is, is not advisable, and there's a fee in lieu. That fee in lieu is meant to be able to go to the northern part of the basin that you're in and to provide detention there. This property is unique in that there is, there is no additional basin above us. We are bordered to the north by Highway 433. North of that is marshland. So there, uh, we are not at the bottom of the typical basin that you might see uh, in other parts of the parish. And uh, it is for that reason that we are asking for the waiver. Uh, and as Mr. Watson noted, uh, the staff has no objection. So we would ask for your approval uh, subject to the staff comments with the waiver. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that any of the commissioners might have at the appropriate time. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody in the audience would like to speak for or against this case? Yes, sir. Come on up and give us your name and address, please. My name is Alejandro Gonzalez. I live at 214 Marlin Drive, Wrigley's Estates. Okay, my, my, my question would be, what would the predicted price, asking price of Phase 3A homes or lots? That, that's not uh, part of the planning situation right now, no. sir. Is there any effort to change the flood zone to VE to match that of Lakeshore Estates AE? which will make the property values not decline. If not, this whole phase will become nothing more than camps with no one paying an insurance. What prevents a person from buying a lot or whole party wall building and rent it out? Wouldn't this make a multifamily apartment according to the parish codes? Will the bottom floors of the party wall townhouses be closed in? You can close the bottom, you can close in the bottom more, no more than 300 square feet in a VE zone. Will phase 3A homes, townhouses, become part of the existing Regalese Estates Homeowner Association or a new homeowners association? That has already been, been addressed by this gentleman. Will the canals have bulkheads put in by the developer, the developer by prevent, to prevent land erosion? Will yeah, sure. Uh, this would have to go through engineering, and engineering is going to have to meet all the. They're going to have to meet all the necessary requirements to to have that canal dug and also have it bulkheaded and whatever has to be done. Mm -hmm. So that's, that that that's a fact. That's a fact. So yeah. This, this, but as far as changing uh, flood flood levels and, mm -hmm. and flood zone areas, that's not this commission's responsibility. Okay. So this 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 is not going to be approved today. Mm -hmm. You know, it will be approved probably today. And this answer, this question will not be answered then? I cannot answer that question. No. I don't have the capability of answering the questions you're having Can at this time. Can the developer answer that? Will the developer be willing to come up and discuss it? 
No. 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 So that's SOS. With that being said, we'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. I do have a question for Paul. Well, we need oh. to offer um, any rebuttal. Do we have a rebuttal? Oh, yes. do we need okay. a rebuttal? Just need to offer Paul? it. Okay, Paul, can you come up and have anything to rebuttal or comments to answer this gentleman's questions? Sure. Um, all, all I would add is um, that with regards to the reasons that we're here tonight, the planning issues at preliminary for these 35 lots, we believe that, uh, that we're in compliance subject to my earlier comments, and we respectfully request your approval based on that. Uh, issues with regards to price of homes, bulkheads, um, flood zones, Really, there's not very much I can add to that because the price of the homes haven't been determined yet. Uh, how the bulkheads will work have not been determined yet. Uh, but I can tell you that we're, we're not, there's nothing that we're doing on this property that's going to modify the flood zones. But even if that were, that would be a decision for FEMA and not, uh, not for us, for you, or anybody in this room this evening. Uh, so we would uh, we'd respectfully request your approval. And again, we would be happy to answer any of the questions the commissioners might have at the appropriate time. Yes, sir, if you'd like to come back up and. I have a question, too, with Tessie. The water, it's, it's always, uh, it always had boil orders, you know, because there's problems with it. The water's always dark. There's always problems with the water, with the, with the Tessie system. And that's a fact. And you're going to add 36 more, 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 more homes to this. I don't believe this place can handle it, much less what we have now, our existing subdivision. Yeah, it sounds like something you need to discuss with, 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 with the landowner who has that uh, waste treatment plant. So that's something I have to deal with. And, and this, regarding to this new addition that will weaken the system even further. I don't know how to answer that. To be honest, but I would like an answer. Well, I, I don't know how to answer that. I, I, I can have Jeff come up and say, but he, he remember, he, they provide the waste and water supply to the current subdivision. They are increasing the subdivision, and they're stating that they have the capacity to do that. With that being said, if you're having difficulty with your water, that's a different subject. You need to go ahead and talk to the well, person what, what in I'm charge of that. What I'm trying to say is that facility is run like a facility would be in Haiti. Uh, well, again, that's not this commission's well, responsibility. Well, if you're going to approve it, and it's and it's and, and that is going to affect our 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 phase. You probably need to call the health department on that. Then, if that's what you decide to do. They say that place. They, they'll tell you that place is not not really like nobody wants to buy it. Let's put it this way: they were trying to sell it. And nobody would buy it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Senior. <laughs> With that being said, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Oh, there's another lady. I'm sorry. Is there someone else like to speak? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my name is Jan Gardner, and I reside at, excuse me, <clears throat> Jan Gardner, and I reside at 119 Marlin Drive. <clears throat> Bless. Um, uh, my major concern tonight is with Tessie because, like, for instance, right now our water is clear, but it tastes like bleach. If it, it doesn't taste like bleach, it, it eventually gets brown again. So we know that something's being cleaned out or changed or whatever, and the present water system can barely cover the homes in, we, we're in phase two, um, they can barely cover it on, on a continuing basis. So I'm not clear on whether a new well is being built or, or dug to provide for these new, ho new homes, or do they think that, I mean, does the developer just plan on using the existing Tessie the way it is now? I think in all fairness, I think, Jeff, if you can come back up and actually help assist us. Paul, sorry. 
Paul, you can come up and assist this lady on. Uh, I have another comment too. Well, we're not going to be debating this thing. Well, you want me to? Yes. Would you please come up and? Sure. Um, my husband and I were. Uh, so you're against this, is what you're trying to say? You're against this yes, whole I, thing? Yes, I am. Because we want to protect our homes. By, I mean, we've invested a lot of money. Like anybody who buys a home invests a lot of money in their home. It's their one major investment in their life, usually. And we've it's been a lot of time, and you know, developing the neighborhood and so on. And we don't want. We're afraid of what's going to come. Is what it is. It's fear. Right. And we're you know not getting a lot of answers. I I applied for the revision of the the plans, and we were told that it would be ready December the fourth. And I still haven't gotten it because I went back up there, um, I guess it was last week, and through the legal system, legal department, and I haven't heard back. So we're just in the dark about what's going on. So, you know, it's just like like any homeowner. You, you just fear the unknown. Um, the other thing is that we were driving around. My husband and I were just driving around Lake Shore Estates the other day, and there are just hundreds and hundreds of homes being built in Lake Shore Villages and I'm not even sure of all the names of all the, the subdivisions back there, and they actually back up to Pirates Harbor, which backs up, you know, is on 433. Um, and I'm just wondering if it's just overbuilding of this area. I'm, I don't know, you know, if, the, if homeowners are, are e eager for these homes or not, but they look like, those look like zero, zero property line homes. I don't think that these in Wrigley Estates will be that way, but um, it's just... Uh, it's just a, a wonder of, of who's going to live in all these homes. All right. Okay. Thank you. This is, this is how to maintain the lift station. I mean, would you care to see it? I, I know the, the uh, area well. This, this, see this, this is a lift station, yeah. three houses for me. Okay. A child could fall in there and, and drown. Okay. A pump is held on by a rope. Okay. My, yeah, my suggestion there, you really have to get with your homeowners association and, and be well, able I to... Well, I am a member of the homeowners association. Right, so. and you need to go ahead and get together well, and talk to the owner about it. Unfortunately, Mr. Segur has not been truthful to us all along. Okay. Thank you. So with regards to Tessie, let's, let's step back and understand something. Tessie's not here tonight. Right. Tessie's not developing Wrigley's. Mr. Segura doesn't own Tessie. Mr. Segura doesn't have the opportunity to go out and tie into Tammany Utilities or Mr. McHugh's utility company. Uh, we have to, by law, tie into the utility company that has lines next to our property. So we don't have any choice but to tie into Tessie. We, too, would like Tessie to perform better. Absolutely. However, I'm not going to ask you, who doesn't control Tessie, uh, to handle that. That is a discussion that needs to be had at the Public Service Commission and Mr. Scrimetta, who uh, regulates that utility. We have met with Mr. Scrimetta uh, and will continue to work with him with regards to Tessie. So, their concerns about Tessie, um, some of which are shared by us, um, but that doesn't have anything to do with our development. With regards to their ability to service, Tessie's ability to service us is not determined by us. Uh, rather, they are a regulated utility through the state of Louisiana. And if uh, their well cannot handle these 35 lots, then their well has to be upgraded before we can make our connection. If their sewer plant can't service the, uh, the capacity from these 35 lots, that sewer plant has to be upgraded before we can make that connection. And all of these safeguards are in place, um, but remember, we're not Tessie. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't control uh, those decisions on Tessie's side. Um, but we know that the state uh, and your engineering department will have to determine if, in fact, our plans meet code and if uh, the facilities that are there have the capacity to serve the functions needed. 
And uh, we believe that they do, but we defer to the state to make that decision. And if there are uh, changes that need to be made, then we recognize those have to be made uh, before that connection is made. Um, with regards to a lot of the other comments, uh, we, we recognize that, uh, uh, that change next door is concerning, uh, and, um, and we're mindful of that. Uh, however, we believe that the product that we're going to be putting out there with regards to this phase of Wrigley's um, will be a benefit to the area. And we certainly uh, are not intending or looking to do anything that is going to detract property values because there is no larger property owner in this area than my client. Uh, so for him to do something on phase 3A that is detrimental to the area would have a devastating effect on him. So if he were a selfish man, he wouldn't do that. He's not. This is a quality project. We believe that it meets your requirements for preliminary. Uh, with my earlier comments notwithstanding, we would ask for your approval. Uh, and again, I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that Mr. Randolph or any other commissioners might have this evening. All right. Thank you. That makes things a lot more clear. Final, final. Come on. Does, does he have a letter stating that they, they do have the capacity, that they don't need a new well drilled? Again, the parish will see if they need the capacity from the engineering side. And if they don't, then they'll have to do something to rectify that. And you'll, you'll give approval without this being? Engineering gives the final approval whether or not they meet the standards for having water. Before a work order is issued on any construction, all capacity will, will definitely be nailed down, and if there are any improvements that are required, they'll be reviewed, approved, and submitted plans before the work order is issued. Thank you, Jay. Not only that, 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 that land, those 100 acres of Mr. Segura owes it there, has, has been under, uh, like, uh, I think it's flood. I mean, not flood, but but swamp, you know, or... That's a, that's a low it's area. Been labeled, area. It's been labeled, you know... Uh, yeah. Wetlands. It is wetlands. What well, is wetlands that is building on? That's correct. Okay, because that's what he's. And as long as long as they have the wetlands permits for that, they can do that. Thank you. You know, sir. another question, another sad thing. Do you know how much Mr. Segura pays for those hundred acres in property I, tax? I don't care, sir. Uh, sir, uh, two hundred dollars. I think you need to sit down. <laughs> I'll bring it back to the commission, Commissioner Randolph. Yes, sir. I'm, I make a motion to uh, approve with the waiver to keep the cul-de-sac. To keep the cul-de-sac, I have a motion to approve with the to keep the uh, cul-de-sac. There's, waiver. there's no waiver required to keep the cul-de-sac. The staff analysis report is stating that they have to have the cul-de-sac. So if you want to okay. just agree with the staff so, analysis report, there is a waiver the for the um, fee in lieu of detention now. Fee in lieu of detention is required. They've requested right. a waiver for fee in lieu of detention. Are you in favor of the, the yes. uh, fee in lieu? Okay. Yes. Thank I've, you, Jay. I have a motion to approve with the waiver for uh, to reduce the to uh, the fee in lieu of a detention. Um, Wait, there's <clears> seven <throat> waivers altogether. To stand corrected, it's it's not a waiver for fee in lieu of detention. It's a waiver to pay no fee in lieu to of detention. To pay no. Fee. Feet. Right, right. Because they're in the very bottom of the drainage basin. That's, it has to drain it to right. the release right. from where they're located. So I just was a little unclear on the uh, on the cul-de-sac. I wasn't sure if, if you want to keep, you keep can it keep, or to get rid of it. Well, the the the, the, com the commissioner has made a motion that you can keep the cul-de-sac. Is that correct? So, you're making a motion oh. to approve with. They need a waiver to not connect to the phases. Yes, that's correct. I stated that backwards and just a second ago. I'm sorry, I'm confusing things. Staff does not want a cul-de-sac. We are requiring the connection in between the two phases. If you want to give them a waiver, that would be to construct a cul-de-sac. Commissioner Randolph, do you want to give them a waiver to not connect the roads and get rid of the cul-de-sac? To, connect, to not connect the road. You have to give them a waiver to keep the cul-de-sac as is. Mm -hmm. The staff is recommending that they get rid of the cul-de-sac and continue the road straight across into the, into the next adjoining road. Okay. 
Yeah, I will. I will agree with staff. Then, then right. there's no waiver needed for okay, that. So, We're just so going the, with the staff comment. So there'll be a waiver for comment number two, three, four, five, six, and fee in lieu of detention. That's correct. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. So Commissioner Randolph has made a motion to approve with the wa with the waivers. Two. Three, four, five, six, and the waiver to pay detention in uh, in lieu of. That, you said it better than I could. Wait, no, hold on. That, let there's me There's no check. waiver on those. Those are hold those on. are general comments. All he's making is a motion to approve Wait, on with second. the waiver, with the waiver, with the waiver of in, the fee yes. in lieu of detention, to to omit that, and to also. I said that correctly. We want, so do you want all the waivers, I mean, all of the comments to apply with the yes. waiver only being of the fee in lieu of detention? Correct. Okay, That's correct. I'm sorry, I confused that. That was correct. my fault. Right. <laughs> Does that make sense? It makes sense. <laughs> Commissioner Doherty. So where are we now with the call to sign? We are on, on a motion to approve with the staff's comments about connecting the road, getting rid of the cul-de-sac, also agreeing with their comments two, three, four, five, and six, but granting the waiver of the fee in lieu of detention. You got it. Perfect. That's where we're at. Okay. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> you just, you I said did. that once yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I will second that, but, uh, and I want to be sure, uh, Paul, that I understood in your engineer's opinion and our staff that there's sufficient capacity for water and sewer for this new, new phase or new subdivision without any additional capacity. Yes, we believe that our engineers believe that uh, there is capacity for these 35 lots. And um, if that is not confirmed, as Mr. Uh, Watson indicated, then we recognize that uh, there would be improvements that would need to be made and we'd have to make them. Okay, so at this point in time, our staff has not reviewed the water and sewer capacities. We've reviewed the plans. The developer's engineer stated that they have the capacity. We will go back and verify that all capacity is in place before any work order is issued. Okay. There's a resident uh, by the name of David Hartley that lives in Wrigley's Estates. He sent a letter to the parish, and the parish had put it in our packets, and uh, he's stating uh, as well as Mr. Gonzalez and, and the other, uh, Ms. Gardner, that there's insufficient capacity. So the capacity is very easy to verify and make sure through DEQ, LDH, uh, for both water and sewer. It's, there won't be any mystery about this. There won't be any what? Mystery about okay. available capacity. All right. Thank you. I have a first and a second. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I don't have a, a problem with the motion, uh, but I do have a, a question and maybe a problem with uh, waiving the fee in lieu of detention. I understand uh, completely the petitioner's request. Make perfect sense. Uh, I just don't know where our authority starts and stops and maybe I can get a legal opinion on this, to waive that kind of fee or our staff waive that kind of fee, or is that something that the council should be doing? And I'm not real clear on that from the ordinance standpoint because it's an interpretation, and it seems, seems like common sense, but I just want to make sure we have such authority. Yeah, it's my understanding that you have this authority. I don't think this is something that normally goes to the council. Am, am I correct, development staff? Um, it has been waived before in the past with uh, River Club. The, we haven't done, the, oh. that's different. Oh. 
that's a waiver to do fee in lieu of detention, which that's been okay. done in the past. This hasn't been done in the past. It's my understanding that anything in the subdivision ordinance that there's no specific clause that says it cannot be waived by the commission, then under, um, I don't know what the section is now that it's changed. It used to be 4100 waiver of regulations. Um, it's, it should be in Chapter 125. Yeah, no, it's in Chapter 125. It's a waiver of regulations, and it states that, that y'all have the uh, authority to waive the regulations when you deem appropriate. Okay, so we didn't, we didn't develop, obviously develop the ordinance. So it's the council's job, <coughs> and I just want to make sure that that authority has been granted. Uh, it does make perfect sense, but I want to make sure we're following all the rules. Uh, yeah. There was an intent there, and although there's always an exception, as long as it's not our job to determine what exceptions you know, are, are valid and what are not. I don't want to put us in a, in a precarious situation. So that was my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Baggert. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, lots uh, 20 to 35, the 40-foot lots, and I'm trying to understand this. They're in groups of four. Are these going to be individual dwellings, or is it going to be four plexes, or what is it? Those are, uh, Mr. Baggert, those are uh, individual uh, townhome lots, but they will be common wall, so you'll be able to buy, that will be a lot that you can purchase, but you have the ability uh, to build common wall zero lot line on those four. So you could sell, all, you know, sell those lots individually? Yes. So a guy don't have to build common wall? Um, he doesn't have to build common wall, but at 40 feet, and of course these will be raised, there'll be boathouse, uh, boathouse lots. So below will be, um, boathouses underneath. Yeah. So in other words, um, rather than parking just your car underneath because of the finished floor elevation that's required by FEMA, right. um, you would also have the ability because it's on the canal to have boat access and vehicular access underneath, uh, the, the dwelling. Okay. All right, I understand now. I have a motion by Commissioner Randolph and a second by Commissioner Darty to grant preliminary subdivision based on the applicant meeting all the general comments from two to six. One to six. Well, I'm sorry, one to six. With also waiving the, the fee in lieu of detention of $53,330.50. Yes, sir. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, now we go to final subdivision review. 2018-1312 FP Maison du Lac, phase 3A, developer owner is WBB Realty, LLC. <clears throat> Engineer is Richard C. Lambert Consultants, LLC. Parish Council District Representative is Marty Dean. Staff? Preliminary, uh, periodic inspections have been made by this office during construction and the final inspection was made on November 28, 2018. The inspection disclosed that all of the concrete roads are constructed, road shoulders are constructed, and the drainage is functioning. No uncompleted items existed at the time of final inspection. However, the following plan revisions are required before final plats can be signed. The final plat, number one, add the required fill and grading note to the final plat as indicated on the fill and grading statement. Master drainage and grading plan number two, add the as-built in, invert information for drain line tees and uh, to the paving and grading plan. Three, revise all notes referencing ordinance 499 to chapter 125 subdivision regulations. Drainage schematic and outfall plan number four, shift the typical outfall ditch section to the right so that it does not cover information contained in the call out for the ditch. Informational items, should the Planning Commission approve the request for final approval, a warranty obligation will be required for the infrastructure in the amount of 160 linear feet at $25 per linear foot for $4,000 for a period of two years. Staff recommends approval of the proposed final subdivision request. Mandatory developmental fees are 
required as follows. Road impact fee, $1,077 per lot for seven lots for $7,539. Drainage impact fee, $1,114 per lot for seven lots uh, for $7,798. Fees are due before the, the subdivision plats can be signed. The subdivision is within the urban growth boundary line and revised plans will not be accepted prior to the December 11, 2018 Planning Commission meeting to ensure that any additional comments established at the meeting can be incorporated into the revised plans. Mr. Murrow. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Again, Paul Marone on behalf of WBB Realty LLC and the Wainer family. Um, this phase of uh, Maison du Lac, as Mr. Watson noted, all of the field work is complete. Uh, since receiving these comments uh, last week, all of the plat revisions, items one through four, have been completed as well. Uh, and we would respectfully request your approval uh, of the plan subject to the staff's comments. Oh, excellent. Any comments from the audience? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Baggert. Um, Commissioner Baggert makes a motion to approve. Commissioner Casabon. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Casabon. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Case 2018-13-14 FP, Jackson Court. Developer owner is First Horizon, Inc. Engineer is Sigma Consulting Group. Paris Council District Representative is Marty Dean. Staff? Periodic inspections have been made by this office during construction, and the final inspection was made on November 28, 2018. The inspection disclosed that all of the concrete roads are constructed, curb and gutter is constructed, detention pond is constructed, and subsurface drainage is functioning. No, recreational, uh, no recreation facilities were installed at the time of final inspection. The following uncompleted items existed at the time of final inspection and will need to be completed before the plats are signed. General comments, number one, base test results are needed. Two, concrete test results are needed. Three, utility trench bedding test results are needed. Four, utility, utility trench backfill test results are needed. Four, uh, five, blue reflectors are needed. Six, the roadway needs to be broomed so that a meaningful inspection can be made. On the final plat, number seven, calculations for the green space are required. Eight, include benchmark information. Nine, include in the restrictive covenant, number 12, that the HOA will be responsible for the maintenance of all green space. Also note, restrictive covenant number 12 must be revised to be in agreement with the dedication statement. Number 10, add to the dedication statement who will own and maintain the street signage and posts. Number 11, the 20-foot drainage servitude in track CA-2 needs to state 20-foot private drainage servitude as shown on the paving and drainage plan. 12, show the approved recreational facilities, i.e. limestone walking path and playground equipment located on track CA-1. A fishing platform was shown on the preliminary plat and is not approved or allowed. All required recreational facilities must be constructed before the plats are signed. Paving and drainage plan number 13, provide elevation shots showing how the 3.67 acres of off-site drainage enters the detention. Show a cross-section of the detention pond at this location. 14, provide elevation shots at representative locations around the top of the pond and the bottom of the pond to confirm that the pond was built as approved. 15, show a typical cross-section of the pond in an east-west direction in the vicinity of lot 37. Number 16, install riprap at the discharge end of the outfall covered as shown on the as-built. Number 17, provide as-built um, elevation shots of the invert of the swale located on top of the outfall covered culvert where positive flow is required. Number 18, provide elevation shots of the invert of the drainage ditch at the rear of lots 1, 2, and 3 in track CA-2. Also show the invert elevation of Highway 22 roadside ditch at this location. Informational items, should the Planning Commission approve the request for final approval, a warranty obligation will be required for the infrastructure in the amount of 1,450 linear feet for $25 per linear foot for $36,300 for a period of two years. Staff recommends approval of the proposed final subdivision request subject to the developer complying with all comments and no plats to be signed until all items are satisfactorily completed. Road impact fee, $1,077 per lot for 46 lots for $49,542. Drainage impact fee, $1,114 per lot for 46 lots for $51,244. Fees are due before final subdivision plats can be signed. The subdivision is within the urban growth boundary line and revised drawings will not be accepted prior to the December 11, 
Planning Commission meeting to ensure that any additional comments established at the meeting can be incorporated into the revised plans. Mr. Shane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jeff Shane again. I represent uh, the owner de developer First Horizon. Um, there are 18 comments before you. Uh, we concur with wholeheartedly with 16 of those comments. Uh, those items have been done and will need to be replatted, obviously, and the revised plats could not have been submitted prior to tonight's meeting. I do want to discuss with you two items, though, that we would ask uh, that you hear our story. If you take a look at item 12 with regard to the recreation facilities, uh, the limestone walking path is now in place. The playground equipment is not. Um, it's been our experience that to put the playground equipment in before the homes are built only creates an attractive nuisance for others to enter the subdivision, et cetera. Um, we would be happy to submit our recreation plan to staff, uh, show them the cost of the playground equipment that we're gonna put there, uh, and if need be, put up a bond in that regard. We certainly uh, don't want uh, anyone to think we're not gonna put the recreation equipment in, but we like to wait until enough of the homes have been completed where there's occupancy, where we know kids will go down there and play and have fun. Uh, the other item we would ask some consideration on would be item 13, and if you'll take a look at it. Um, that is a track owned by the Adair family uh, to the south. Uh, there are two existing four-inch PVC pipes that lead from their property, they're buried, uh, and go into our pond. They've been there long before we developed um, this track. So what we've done, they uh, apparently uh, brought to the parish's attention that they had concerns about their drainage uh, and whether it would continue to be received uh, by this development. Uh, what my client has done is gone in and number one, cleaned out both of those pipes, which was a real problem. So the pipes are gonna remain in place and continue to discharge into the pond. Number two, we're gonna place aggregate underneath uh, the pipe uh, where it uh, enters the pond so there won't be erosion in that area. Uh, the thing that we would be, uh, we'd like to do and, and intend to do is to shoot an elevation for the invert of the culvert where it enters the pond so that staff will be comfortable that the waters obviously are gonna be received from the neighboring properties to the south. So with those two modifications, namely as to item 12, present a rec plan to the staff for their approval and consideration and putting up an appropriate bond or letter of credit, maybe up to 12 months, depending on how long it takes to get some houses out there. And number two, providing an elevation for the invert on the two pipes that enter the pond from that 3.67 acres. We would respectfully request that you grant final approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Lauren. <clears throat> Jeff. <clears throat> yes, sir. I want to make sure I understand what we're saying. On item <clears throat> 12 and 13, the developer, Mr. Weiner, is willing to put up a letter of credit or a bond to cover those two items. Uh, no, sir. And it's not Mr. Weiner. It's um, First Horizon. Okay. Um, well, First Horizon. Yeah. Uh, but they are, with regard to item 12, the limestone walking path is in place. But I'm talking like about the plate present, equipment. We'd like to present a plan showing our equipment and the cost thereof, put up a sufficient bond to staff satisfaction uh, up to a 12-month period before we would actually uh, put the playground equipment on site. Okay. And what about 13? Item 13, um, we believe that that issue has been addressed because we went in, found the two pipes that lead from the 3.67 acres, cleaned them out, make sure they're functioning. We're going to place aggregate under the pipe where it enters the pond so there won't be erosion. But we think it is in good order for us to provide the elevation of the invert of that pipe where it enters the pond so that staff will be satisfied and comfortable that the water is going to flow from the neighbor property into our pond. We will continue to receive our neighbor's water from the south. Okay, with those two things covered, I'll make a motion to approve. Can we, uh, oh, if, excuse me. Um, just as far as a performance obligation goes for the amount, uh, for the 
playground equipment, I would recommend that the Planning Commission establish the amount for the performance obligation. <laughs> we had another thought. <laughs> uh, we think that equipment's going to cost around five thousand dollars. The playground equipment. Is that satisfactory? So is that sufficient for me, you, Miss Commissioner Lawrence? Pardon? Is five thousand uh, dollars? Well, I'm asking the staff. Is the, uh, well, the yeah, actual piece that we're looking, looking at, um, and that we looked at it this evening. It runs just a little less than three thousand dollars, and it provides all kinds of activities, if you will. Uh, kids will be able to do just about everything with this piece of equipment. So, I mean, technically, we think that three thousand dollars would be sufficient. But um, well, I'm <clears throat> let me rephrase my motion. Then I make a motion to approve with a five thousand dollar. You want a bond or a letter of credit? A performance bond. A performance bond. bond. Whether that's a letter of credit, cash, or whatever. But we'd like to submit a plan, and if the staff is comfortable with the plan, it doesn't mean there has to be $5,000 of equipment. It just means that there'll be a bond there to right. cover. Up to. We're do right. Up to. We'll establish a $5,000 performance obligation security for one uh, year. Right, for one year. Finance will make sure they get the security okay. in whatever fashion that they want. And then, whenever the recreational plan is fulfilled with the playground equipment installed, we'll release the performance okay. obligation. Okay. Commissioner Willie. Uh, yes, that, uh, five th back to that $5,000. Would that include the cost and the installation of the equipment? That would be easily covered into yes. that. Okay. That's why I included some money over and above the cost of the equipment okay. itself. It would so that in a worst-case scenario, the parish would have the funds to purchase the same type of equipment and install it. Okay. A second. I have a second by Commissioner Welly. Commissioner Doherty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is, again, I, I'm <clears throat> there's too many punch list items. I, I mean, it, it just seems like and I've never heard of Sigma Consulting. Maybe we've had cases, but uh, I don't know if they just need to be familiar with our ordinances and, and what we expect at the commission level. But, you know, for our staff to have to prepare their punch list, I, I really have a problem with that, Jeff. Uh, you've got a motion and a second, but uh, it, it's just too many punch list items in my opinion. Yes, thank sir. You. I understand, and your message is clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? If not, I have a motion by Commissioner Lauren and a second by Commissioner Willie to approve with a one-year $5,000 bond performance for the recreational facilities and also for the applicant for number 13 general comment to provide elevated shots for the actual two f lines that are draining back to the detention pond. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Please vote. Motion carries. Okay, amendments to Chapter 125, Subdivision Regulations, none. Any old business? I think we have some new business. Uh, um, Commissioner, Chair? Yeah, Commissioners, I just want to remind you that at your January 2nd or 3rd, whatever the date is, um, Zoning Commission meeting, you will be voting again on your chair and vice chair, so just some food for thought. Any more information for uh, new business? If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, um, oh, sorry. Commissioner Drum. Oh, Commissioner Drum. Go ahead. You got it. Uh, just to remind the chairman, or acting chairman, or the chairman, or whatever you want to be, uh, don't forget we need a new roster typed up since our uh, committee has changed quite a bit along with current phone numbers and emails as well please
if everybody could submit that, if they could email me or call me and give me all your updated information, that would be wonderful. Well, I'm good to go. I'm always the best. I'm right there on top. I'm good. <laughs> yes, everybody just please send the information to Kara. Sign for Bagger, please. <laughs> That's it? That's it. I make a motion that we go home. All right. Yeah. Motion. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all in January. Oh, and Mary.